I brought each of you a signed book. Oh, Did you have a British accent? I'm you... from Hong Kong. Oh. So it used, we used to be a British colony. Just yeah. Like you guys. That's the same exactly. thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank joke. you. That's our cold and open. Do you have a British <laughs> accent? No, actually, hung- Chinese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I can hear over the wig muffs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to Out and About. It is April 2nd, 2024. We are officially one month out from our Atlanta show, which explains why if you're watching instead of listening, Joey and I are dressed in Southern garb because we have a a charm etiquette coach coming on the show today, Sarah Jane Ho, to teach us how to be Southern gentlemen as as we embark on our tour, our cross-country tour. Well, thank you for having me, mister. (laughs) Am I allowed to talk like that? Of course, you're allowed to have a Southern accent. Yeah. How have you been? Talk to me. Are you excited for the tour? Are you excited for Sarah Jane Ho? I'm not excited for the tour, but okay. I do have a double stack wig on. Okay. Um, you have a flowery dress. I have a floral dress on. I have lace details. I have my. I brought. I, it's BYOB today. BYOB. Bring your own bow. I have a velvet ribbon that's swallowed up by my gut. <laughs> How was your Easter? <laughs> Easter was great. I went home. I hung out. If you if you follow me on socials, you saw that I did survive babysitting both of my nephews. Not to brag, you know, it was nice to just be back around fam, but also leave in time so that you don't kill each other. I feel like that's that's the trick, knowing just how much time you can spend around your family without wanting to rip their throats out. Now, you had ladies at the house. You had help. You had Poppy, who was cooking up a storm. Poppy did all the cooking. Yeah. I, I made a salad. Okay. And I made a cocktail. Oh. I made a new carrot cocktail. It's going to blow your balls off. I'll share the recipe soon. I have to write it up. And I'm still testing one more version of the recipe, but... How cute. I did that on Poppy. You know, it was beautiful. We had a great time. He hired two new ladies that he met in public. They never, and they never worked a party before. Um, but they were fine. I don't, I don't, I didn't catch their names, but they were lovely. The, I saw you put up an Instagram story where you walk by, you go, okay. And you just walk well, right by. My father, my father put them in, um, in his old chef's coats. They look cute though. I thought, it, I, I mean, listen, it wasn't. Well, it went a, swimmingly. It was, you know. I mean, the tablescape was not 2023, but that's fine. You need, you do it every other year. You go all out on the tablescapes. Yeah, this year I didn't need to do it. And I got, you know, I just did some bright pops of color. I had some like remnants from last year for the tablescape. The dinner was, you know, perfect. Just amazing food. We had a great time um, chatting. My uh, my niece, um, my niece, my cousin got engaged this year. So we're kind of planning that, planning the wedding of the century. Very nice. Can right you believe now. it's already April? Like summer is right around the corner. No, I know. That's why I have my trainer because I'm a slob kebab and he's like he's trying you, to get you've me You've been in. doing it though, which is good. Yeah. I'm allowed to go back in the gym, thank God, but I need to join a new gym so I'm not paying $3,000 a month for that one near my house. I need to get in shape. The time has come. Diego and Vinny, how are your Easters? Same, same. Nothing, yeah? Nothing special, yeah. Just sat home. Was hung over. So. What, how much did you drink? Uh, I drank more the night before. Did you have Kokicho? <laughs> <laughs> That's they had that at my house last night. What is that? It's a it's a Spanish. Is it Spanish? Is it Puerto I don't Rican? Know. It's like Dominican, I think. Yeah, I don't think Dominican. It's, I think it's Next. Dominican. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Do you have a big Thanksgiving or a big Easter at your house? No, just you and the bros. Just me. My brothers doesn't live with us anymore, so it's just me, and my sister, and then and that's he's a sleepaway yeah. camp, and that sister-in-law. Yeah, the sister-in-law. Which you've been, like, you been complaining about a lot about off camera. <laughs> no, no, so that's just not let true. everyone know. Vinny, how about you? Uh, good. Just hung out with the fam. I was very hungover. Uh, I told you guys going into Easter, so I didn't drink too much. Over Where did the, you yeah. go? How'd you get hungover? Ah, didn't uh, Vinny miss a show? I didn't miss, so no, you no. guys kicked me out of it. Oh, that's true. Well, I was, I just, I was I, trying to be on it, and you guys just did it without me. Didn't even send well, me the a, link. I'm a web developer. <laughs> I know how to do this now. Right. So <laughs> it was nice because I needed the extra sleep, so I appreciated it. But. Where did you go to get hungover from? Did you go to Hunka Bunka? I, I went to. A, I went to. <laughs> I went to a Krong Bin concert. It's an indie band. That sounds racist. And <laughs> Krong Bin. As I'm wearing, as wearing a, a, a yeah. Polynesian dress. As we're dressed as plantation plantation uh, owners. Plantation owners. Um, Krong Bin. Oh my god. They're actually sick. They're sick. Oh, you know them too. Yeah. Uh huh. That's I didn't that. know that's how you pronounced it when he said he, he was going that's, there. That's and I was like, what yeah. the? That's I'm offended by that picture. There's too much diversity going on. That's absolutely not. They're great. They're like indie. And I saw them at like a really small like Bowery Ballroom, made 100 people. And I got way too drunk afterwards. What were you drinking? Lots of tequila. Lots of tequila. tequila. What, what, what kind of inhibitions do you get, like, let out the window when you're drinking too much tequila? That's a good question. What Would you, you let me suck your cock in this wig? <laughs> Imagine if, you look down and you see a big double wig bops off the head as you're going. If Brennan gave me permission, maybe. Oh, my God. No, you, have to, you have to ask her. <laughs> Does Brenna still hate us? No, she loves you guys. I don't know. 
Are you going to show up to my birthday party this year? Is Brennan going to show up to my birthday party this year? <laughs> <laughs> what, are the, can I, can I, what kind of song? What, how do you pronounce this? Krongbin. Krongbin. They're great. Highly recommend. It's mostly instrumental. Is that woman just multicultural or is she doing Asian face? She's trying to do, she's trying to be MGMT. That's what she's trying to be. These people are not MGMT. They'll never be MGMT. Don't hate on them till you listen. All right. They're very good. Speaking of um, cultural appropriation, um, Beyonce, a realistic country album. <laughs> I could, I didn't think it was that good. You listened to the album? I listened to the stunk. whole thing. I, thought I, heard, I was like, what is I heard this? Different, I heard different things. I heard that it's going to get album of the year. They've never heard something so so ma- um, so masterfully crafted. I guess there's a song named Ya Ya that everyone's talking about that has like so much things, so much different different types of music all in one um, thing. There's They're like 25 songs on it. A masterpiece. Um, she did cover of Jolene. Um, she did a cover of Nancy Sinatra. She did... Um, Too Much. I mean, I don't. I haven't listened to it, so I can't say. But I do love horses and blonde wigs. I will say this: I think Taylor Swift will remain safe. People are saying that Beyonce was going to kick Swift her off the, the country crown. Taylor yeah, Swift isn't a country true. artist. Yeah, but like she started as one, and she she pivoted it within within two, within her within her second album. She pivoted. She had one country album. I still consider her country in my head. Like for me, I always think Taylor Swift like Nashville way. country. I don't. But she's not oh, now. She's not at all. Yeah. She's nothing of a sort. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Cruella. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm proud of her. I just don't like that. Should we on? I just don't like that there has to be that message underneath it that she feels that that people were mean to her. Like she said that she, to people told her that, that you're like, there's no space for you here. We don't want you or something like that. That, that motivated her to make this album. I, and I don't like that they had that. That's that's not that's not nice. No space know? for her in country. You're saying there wasn't space for her. That's she, she said that that's, that's what motivated for her to do this. I also album. want to know who is saying that to fucking Beyonce. Give me a name. Is that uh, just people what you dress f- like us? Is that is that just what you feel? It's like when we did the red carpet and we were shitting on everyone in sweatpants. It's like I don't think anyone is telling Beyonce she can or can't do something. Well, she said she had a statement. Can you Google the statement about that she had? That please. I'm sorry. I love the album cover though. Yeah. Maybe that Ooh. should be for a little Austin poster. We just recreate the Carter. We get a horse in the office. Beyonce or edit one of your faces as the horse. I've been, that, a, I've been a quest, an equestrian now queen we're for many years. Diego. <laughs> Diego's a cat queen. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> Beyonce is uh, opening up with inspiration. Oh, that's that led not to it. That's not it. It's Carter. downtown. Let's go down or something. Like Google, Oh, here like, we go. It says, I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the hot country song chart. That would not have happened without the outpouring support. Okay. That's isn't it. It was beforehand. Say there's the, the sentiment is that she feels that she wasn't welcome in the country space. That's what it's that's what it's saying. I don't have the exact quote. But I mean I get it. I also, mean, there's who black the fuck country is, artists. Oh, speaking of country, shout out to uh Brianna Chicken Fry and Zach Bryan. Large, you know, Large's son Finn. Yeah. Who we love. Finn is a huge fan. Uh, Large got him tickets to see Zach Bryan for Christmas. Brianna found out they were there, brought him backstage to meet Zach oh, Bryan. Nice. It was like, Large was saying it was like the greatest thing ever. So huge shout out to Brianna Chicken Fry and Zach for doing that. That was very, very sweet. There they are. Is Finn that is, the one I met in the club? Yeah. No, no, no. That was Mick. Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was uh, that was great. We love Finn. We love Large. We love Ann. But yeah, I that don't know. Overhead lighting, Mama. I know. That's tough overhead lighting. Oh, look how great. What a great, what a great looking fam, huh? But yeah, I'm excited. Spring has sprung. I've been, I've been, I've been ODing on florals. I do have to admit, I yes. did, I did, I did. Um, I talked about something that's happening. I did. A Jamali Hall have. Um, no, J- uh, Jamali doesn't have florals. Jamali is only for decor. Oh. Um, now I went to d- d- my my places. I won't, I won't say, but I spent a lot on flowers this week. Well, good. Last you deserve week. it. You deserve it, Queen. No, it was too much. So. What's a good Southern flower? The magnolia. <laughs> Should we do magnolias on every? Magnolia table? is the most Southern flower, and peach is the most Southern fruit. Um, I guess peach, yeah. Clementine? Clementine's, yeah, Floridian. Floridian? I don't know. Well, we have Sarah Jane Ho on the show today. Um, She's the author of a new book called Mind Your Manners. She was also a Netflix host. She started the first ever etiquette school in China. She's a very successful woman. She also has feminine wipes. Feminine wipes, which you guys are going to love. So um, without further ado, go to nowshewilltour.com. And if you don't want to do that, stick around for this interview with Sarah Jane Ho. You guys are going to love it. 
Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every single week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started and get after your goals today, Joe. Two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with fa Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to go and heat whenever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Flexible to your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule deliveries anytime. Head to Factormeals.com slash Out50 and use code Out50 to get 50% off. That's code Out50 at Factormeals.com slash Out50 to get 50% off. Hi, guys. Hi. Good evening, Miss Ho. Good morning, Miss Ho. Good morning, Miss Ho. Welcome on in. <laughs> no, a lady wouldn't cross her legs like this. No. <laughs> That's a nice hairy leg. Thank oh. you. <laughs> you embarrassed her? She puts it in. I think I'm so hot. <laughs> All right, everyone, we are here with the world famous Sarah Jane Ho. She is um, the queen of all manners. She has a Netflix series uh, titled Mind Your Own Manners. She has a book called Mind Your Own Manners. She is here to teach Joey and I how to be proper Southern gentlemen because as you know, our tour kicks off south of the Mason-Dixon line in Atlanta, Georgia, which explains our outfits today. Joey, I want you to walk me through what you're wearing. And first of all, thank you for being here, Miss Thank Ho. you for being here. Um, right, I'm wearing a traditional gown yes. from, the, from the Times. The times. Now they, do you think they're still dressing like this in Atlanta? Well, we're going to find out. We need to find out what we need to wear, what's appropriate to now wear, I have. Not. I believe these are, they look like blue roses, but I don't think that's a thing. Those hydrangeas? No, they're not hydrangeas. I'm wearing a, a, a floral gown with lace detail. Okay. I do have, I have a velvet bow right above my petticoat. Okay. And I went with a double stacked wig. Now, I'm in a traditional linen pant with a cream vest, some suspenders that match the bow tie. Obviously, we have a mustache, a hat, a monocle, and a pocket watch, which counts down to my next insulin shot for my prediabetes. So yeah, when we, th when we thought of um, etiquette, we wanted to be our classiest versions of ourselves. Right. And bringing Southern charm, but then I told, I, I, we sh I told you that um, Sarah was not an, a Southern expert. She's, but it's Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. I'm oh, sorry. Sarah Jane. It's very important that you call someone by their name by their name that they choose to be chosen by. That's right. Um, and it's mind your manners, not mind your own manners. Mind your manners. Yeah. Mind your manners. Mind your manners. Explain to us what it is you do, and then we'll, we got a bunch of questions for you. Yeah, I am an etiquette expert. I started China's first finishing school. Oh my god. So in the South, you call it charm school. Mm -hmm. In Europe, you call it finishing school. It's also etiquette school. Mm -hmm. And I started that 10 years ago. I think we have another book, right? Do we, oh, yeah, we have two, oh, yeah, we have two books. Um, I did that 10 years ago, and that's since become an etiquette book in Chinese, a Netflix show, etiquette book in English that's coming out just right now. That's definitely an English accent, by the way. <laughs> doesn't it sound English? Well, I think it's just proper. I think it's just yeah. proper, proper English. So, how, so when you say you started etiquette school, how does like how does that work? Who are your students? What kind of things are you teaching? Let's run yeah. It down. So my students are adults. I don't really teach kids. Yeah. Ladies, I like to say yummy mummies are my students. Thank you. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and in my in my Netflix show, Mind Your Manners, we really had a wide, diverse variety of students. I mean, there were Americans, there were Chinese. And um, it's really about it's really about helping people become their most confident selves. Okay. And I say that etiquette is about it's about letting it's about making other people feel comfortable around you, right? Because that <laughs> makes you feel comfortable around them. Do you feel comfortable around us? Do you feel comfortable around us? I'm having so like I love like, I'm having so much fun. I, <laughs> as soon as I heard what the getup would be today, I was like I love it. It's so original, and I'm going to Atlanta, Georgia next week. Are you? So this is really she's on selling out arenas. Brand. We're going to we're going to this small strip club comedy <laughs> comedy tour. <laughs> um, we've never been to I've never been to Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I've been there even a few times. I have been out. I oh. went to Magic City once, but not like really out anywhere proper. That's a strip club. 
<laughs> I don't think she's going to anything like that. No. So what was your first impression of us? I mean, in terms of etiquette, in terms of physical posture, I know that that's very important, how you carry yourself. How would you say we're doing? Is there anything we could improve on to kind of elevate ourselves in the room as of right now, first impression? Oh, yeah. Well, I think one thing that you could do is you could iron your clothes. Yeah. That was a read. <laughs> I said that. I said, my, is, it, is this my petticoat? This is just the back of the dress. Yeah. I mean, I, do you have anything underneath that? I just I have my gym clothes on. Underneath. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because you. Really... I wanted to have a hoop skirt, but I couldn't find that. Yeah. So I'd say you know ironing is is pressing yeah. your clothes is okay. maybe Making step sure one. Making sure the presentation. We did just get, we put those out of a bag from Amazon five minutes ago. Ironing clothes. What else? Um, I would <laughs> say having like fitted clothes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Fitted I clothes. recently just had lost a lot of weight. That's why the dress is big on me. Yeah, um, he don't, and she ordered me a, a triple XL. I did order a triple X. Now, what about posture? Because in your show, I saw a clip where you had people walk with books on their heads. How important is posture in terms of, you know, confidence and etiquette? Yeah, but you know, posture. The funny thing is, you realize posture is more important as you get older because that's when all your back issues come out. Right. Mm. You guys are still really young, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but you know, the thing with posture is, I mean, when you walk a certain way and when you present yourself a certain way, if somebody comes into a room, they have good posture, you just, you notice them. Yeah. And that creates a very good first impression. Yeah. It's almost like it's, it's free. It's already in you. And it's, it's the little things you can do in your life to like elevate your life without, you know, needing anything else but that, that God already gave you. You know what I mean? Speaking well. T- totally. Oh, yeah. Ironing your ironing your 18th century hoop dress before a guest comes in. <laughs> well, no, you, you would have to need an iron for that, but you can, you know, within you, you can speak ni- nicely and you could sit up straight. And Should you we sit up? Carry, just come out and carry yourself. It's something that's already in you and you can use as a, um, as a tool. And that's what I say, exactly what I say etiquette is. Etiquette is a free tool. Yeah. It's a free tool to, people think, oh, etiquette is one big no. I can't yeah. say what I think. I can't do what I feel. But I say etiquette is actually really empowering. It helps you do whatever you want, say whatever you want. It's all just about how you do it. How you deliver it. So, for example, you could come in and say, iron your goddamn clothes. But because she you're sitting up. She wouldn't say goddamn. She's too proper. <laughs> because we're sitting up nicely, we can say whatever whatever we'd like. Um, have you worked with people in the South before? Um, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to teach in Atlanta. That's right. What's like a class, like what's it even consist of? Like you have people come in. And then they, you're just like set up straight. Like, how does it work? Well, What's your syllabus? Yeah, so I have different modules. My full course is called a hostess course. Okay. How to be a hostess in the home, not the hostess in the bar. Okay. And <laughs> it's got different modules. I love that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a homemaker myself. And I entertain I all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're a, ho- a hostess. Yes. And there's, there's everything from dressing, dining, um, conversation. So, for example, even like greetings, introductions. How do you introduce two friends or two strangers who are meeting Ooh, for the first time? That's a good one. How do you do table seating? Right, like who sits next to who? Oh, I love this. this showing is right in my alley. showing the precedence of people. So, for example, the important guest should sit close to the host, that's and then you like, fan oh. out. That whole thing about about um, Andy Cohen on the couch and the Real Housewives reunions. Whoever sits yeah. close to Andy is the most important. Exactly. You would always get first seating. I hope so. That's interesting. And then take it off. So I got to take it off. So then what else other than like the seating and stuff like like we need to know how to like uh, how should we address our crowd when we go in there? Because when we do live shows, we typically come out, we dance, we have a couple of drinks, maybe one too many. We want to really put on a good impression for our southern guests. So is there anything you suggest we do to address the crowd in a polite manner? Um, really hook them in early because we're performers first and foremost, I think. Well, normally I would go on the stage with a drink in my hands and vaping and scream, hey, bitch. Mm. <laughs> right? Well, I would yeah. say, I'd say like, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. That's good. Yeah. A little. And everyone says ma'am there. Yes, ma'am. No, yes. ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am, sir. No, no. Ma'am. They say yes, sir. No. They say yes, sir as well, just to the ma'ams. Um, you know, it's funny. I actually say yes, sir and yes, ma'am to all the people anyway because yes. in Asian culture, we really have a respect for it. Elders. seniors yes. or elders but i often say etiquette is contextual so the way you would greet a crowd in georgia is different from the way you greet a crowd maybe in vermont yeah how would you greet a crowd in vermont <laughs> <laughs> i'd probably include probably something about tree vermont. hugging i, would, yeah, I wouldn't go there about weed you wouldn't about go there hugging. yeah um not wearing deodorant how would you how do you address someone if you don't know their pronouns 
Ooh. It's Tetris. That's why I call, that's when the gay, uh, girl, girl is the gay aloha, mm. because it means, hey, yeah, man, woman means everything. Hey, girl. It can be for anyone. So. I lo- I'm going to use that from now on. Yeah, please feel free to use it. Um, it is, however, it is trademarked. <laughs> that's because I, I forget names all the time. Even here, like to my my, my um, heterosexual male coworkers, I just call them girl too because I, I don't know their names. And that's kind of part, part of my personality that I've I've adopted here. So it's kind of just like, oh, hey, bitch. Hey, girl. Not I don't want to say bitch too much in front of an etiquette coach. But <laughs> is it ever inappropriate to swear? Well, I guess we'll Listen, the... I swear. You do? Yeah. What's your yeah, favorite? just not on camera. What's your favorite swear? She can't say it. We'll bleep um, it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have a variety I like to use. Let's hear them out. There's the F word. There's the S word. There's, um, that, that's pretty much the two most common ones I use. <laughs> she goes the F word mostly. <laughs> yeah. She goes, that's the one I used in my head on the way in here. <laughs> I'm like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> but I'm, I'm more about the school. Like, what age, when do people in their lives, um, is it all the same age decide to go to the etiquette schooling um, in, in uh, China, where you're from? Does, is it like you know? Is it around like right after college or right 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 uh, before college? Like when is it? When's usually oh, yeah. the age oh, they that's come? A great question. And is yeah. it men and women? Is it is it mostly females that are coming or is it everyone? Well, so, so our hostess course is for married women. Okay. So anyone from starting in their twenties upwards, and then we have a debutante course, and then we have a debutante course for unmarried women. Oh. Okay. So sometimes we have mother and hostess and daughter and debutante. Okay. What does debutante mean? I just want to. Uh, so debut. De- so yeah, a debut, debut is when you enter. Like so, it's like somebody who's oh. entering society. They've ju- maybe they're like in high school or they just graduated high school or just graduated college. Like a debutante ball. It's a high class quinceanera. Got it. Okay. Pretty much. <laughs> it's just like, exactly. This is my. This is our daughter. This is our, this is our prize pig here. Yeah. <laughs> We're showing her off to the. This the is world. our cash pig. Trying to get them married off to a wealthy family. That's essentially yeah. the routine. Yeah. Did you watch Gilded Age? Yeah. Yes. Love that show. <laughs> Honey. So. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so the debutante class is more from the perspective of when you're a guest. Okay. And then the hostess <gasps> course is more from the perspective of when you're a host. I almost cross my legs towards you, and that's rude. Is it rude? It depends. If you I don't actually, want my shoe in front of you. Okay, so you don't want your shoe facing me, especially the bottom but of her. your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I've, I've been licking boots for years. I got no issue here. But crossing towards actually shows a sign of interest. Yeah, well, I, I'm interested in you, but I also don't want to scare you with my, my hoof in your face. There. And, <laughs> there also throws, and also throws shades to her. <laughs> so you know that I'm bored with her conversation. <laughs> He's interested, but he also doesn't want you to see his balls. <laughs> so that's why, so that, let's just cut to the chase. That's okay, what it is. So I'm interested before, in yeah. the Deb so for the Deb class. Say that Trish and I are this. This is Trish. Mm. Um, and I are are coming to the Deb class. What kind of things would you go over? Um, yes. For the de- for the Debs, is it about is it about finding a partner and, and making yourself the most attractive? Um, to other to men, male suitors, or is it more about just you know how to be ladylike? And you're going to be going to nice dinners. You want to? Is it more about like learning the, um, the art of dining correctly and carrying yourself, introducing yeah. yourself to the rich mother-in-law? You know what I mean. So right? I would say, oh yeah, we do have a mother-in-law. I have a mother-in-law Ooh, chapter in my book. That's a whole thing, monster-in-law subchapter. Yeah, uh, but for debutantes, it's more like, so for example, one of the fav- their favorite classes they actually find most difficult is how to walk in flats and how to walk in heels. Honey, should we do that now? She's the modern day RuPaul. You are the modern day RuPaul. <laughs> Who is that? RuPaul, exactly. <laughs> uh, Ru- RuPaul uh, is a very, uh, one of the most famous, famous drag queens in the, in the United States. Oh. And she has a show of um, empire, of empire, if you will, of, um, um, you want to pull her up? called RuPaul's Drag Race, which is that You've reality show competition. Her. Reality show competition. And um, she's launched the careers of um, over there she is. 200 drag queens. Oh gosh, I love her. Yeah. How to walk in flats versus how to walk in heels. Yeah, so when you walk in flats, when a woman walks in flats, you walk like a man, <laughs> which is heel down first, right? It's like bam, 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 okay. bam, bam. Yeah. But when you walk in heels, your heel and the and the front of your foot should actually hit the floor at the same time. Oh. So that's why you but- want to do smaller steps. So right. he sounds like a Clydesdale when he comes Stopping down the hallway. Stopping the stunways. It's like ta 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 ta. You don't want any yeah, sound. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't want the ta 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 ta. Because firstly, you can break the heel, especially if you're heavy. Not oh, that oh. you are. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I mean, that's what we always say. We have a tr- that's why Care- tr- careful, <laughs> careful, she Sarah has to Jane. Order me a um, a triple reinforced heel. Careful, Sarah Jane. You're treading on thin water with old man. Now she will bite. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I understand. No, you can break the heel, and that's and that's, that's not lady like stomping mm-hmm. through the club no, yeah. with one heel. 
So you don't totally. want to make any noise, especially if you're heavy. Yeah, and and also when you're in heels, the smaller your step, the more elegant it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't so, want to be noisy. But you're saying, cause I, I always thought it was heel, toe, heel, toe. Like, when you wear flats. Flat. Mm-hmm. But the heel, then aren't you essentially just going like this? Exactly. So what you do is you kind of just kick your foot out daintily and you just you land at the same time. I'm going to try that today. Yeah, you want to try yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, let's give it a Did try. Here? Yeah. I guess. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, so, now hack up that scoot there. Uh, yeah. Oh, your wig's on. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. So Joey's standing up right now in the corner. We have limited space. He's going to go ahead and walk. You oh, got, oh my gosh, you got it. Nicer. Yes, you got it. Oh, you were like my best student ever. Now do your natural I was always walk. Going like this. I would always normally go like this. <laughs> he'll toe, he'll toe. Because I thought, I think it's important for balance when you're trying to like start in heels for the first time, but I was born into mm-hmm. the culture. <laughs> <laughs> I really learned something that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've been following the famous Miss Peaches, you know that she's been living her happiest life since being rescued and she's being spoiled with only the best. The best gift she's received yet, according to her favorite human, Uncle D, is the bowl and branch sheets. They sent you a pair and they sent me a pair. It changed the way I sleep at night. Yes, they are the most luxurious sheets that I own. I have, I've, I've been I've been friends with them for many moons at Bowl and Branch. That's actually the story when I, when I, when I whoopsie daisy myself, I was coming from <laughs> Bowl and Branch. Thank God it wasn't on the sheets. Uh, but I've been using, if you want luxurious sheets that are like you feel like you're in a hotel, they're going to wash and get better with everywhere yep. um they come in all these different colors they come in like i think like 14 different shades yep um they have something for everyone and if you don't sleep on the waffle blanket the waffle blanket is arguably the most luxurious item in my home um it's just it's just high 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 class we love bowl and branch they're 100 cotton uh organic cotton and completely free of toxins they're loved by millions of sleepers soft yet breathable sleep better with the softest most breathable bedding from bowl and branch during their best discount of the entire season see for yourself why bowl and branch sheets were famous miss peaches favorite gift of the night at bowl and with promo code about for 20 percent off that's right get 20 percent off your order when you use promo code about at bowl and branch.com that's bowl and branch b-o-l-l-a-n-d branch Dot com promo code about exclusions apply see site for details and then the homemaking that's what really gets to me jess i'm a home cook i'm an entertainer i recently um got my dream apartment so i've been doing a lot of entertaining a little too much too much entertaining um and i just like you know i i roll out the red carpet it's you know everything from glassware to um signature cocktails appetizers you know themes and florals it's like i do like the whole <laughs> thing um Wow. So I'm I'm interested to learn like what are some things that oh, excuse me that was no belching is yeah what are some, what are some things that make a, that make a good uh, hostess host. okay so here's the thing a good hostess it, I mean of course you know music setting all that is important but at the end of the day what really makes a dinner magical is the conversation yeah that's so true. you can be in a hole in the wall you can be eating anything but if the chemistry if the conversation oh. is on point. Everybody will walk away thinking, I just went to the best dinner. Yeah. And that is it's all up to the hostess. The thing you take away from, the things you bring home with you. Yes. And so the conversation, of course, you know, the guests contribute. But the host or hostess is like a conductor of an orchestra. Yeah. Right? So you have to, when you do table seating, don't put all the noisy people, loud people together, and then the quiet people on one side. Right? right. You want to have it evenly balanced. Just like how we say uh-huh. in Western table seating, you have a man, woman, man, woman. So mixed mixed you oh, know I didn't know that was a thing yeah and then also you you set uh you pull apart people who are good friends otherwise they'll just end up chatting to each other complaining uh, about their boyfriends i always or, yes. thought you kept them together no you no, separate because it's a point of being social yes ah. you want to break them up you also break up couples unless they're newlyweds or you know it's like within one year right you s- separate them and you separate people of different industries as people, people in the same industry, you separate. So you don't want all the lawyers together and all like the you right. know, doctors together. Oh, our together. friends don't have jobs. <laughs> we're, we're, we're good, girl. They don't have jobs. That's and if you notice somebody is, there's maybe there's that one person who talks a lot. Ugh. You as a host or hostess, it Kick is your duty oh, to Just manage that. To manage that. And it's almost like there's a microphone and that envisage a microphone and you have to jump in there and like sort of, you know, allegorically take the microphone away from them. To feel the situation. Well, like, bit. you know, maybe like, you know, say, oh gosh, like Joey, I haven't let you eat your food. And then immediately, if Pat's been really quiet, Pat, like tell us about Atlanta. Didn't you go recently? Ah. Oh, that's a good tactic. That's and a very good tactic. So you want everybody, I often say every guest is like a flower. You need to help them blossom. 
That's beautiful. How do you have, if say, a lot of times in New York City, there's like, you know, different, where everyone kind of has, uh, comes from where they come from. So they're either like friends from home or, so I, a lot of times in the parties at my house, um, people are meeting for the first time, separate, separate groups, very important groups in my life are meeting kind of for the first time. And they all have kind of the sense of, um, not ownership, a sense of like, you know, like. Wonderment. No, like they, they like, they're like, I'm like, I'm the main person in, in the, in the, um, party. And like everyone, like my, these are my friends from here. They don't really know each other. These are my friends from here. They don't mm-hmm. really know each other. And they kind of have like, you know, like a, like a standoff almost like, you know, we're more, we're better friends with him or I'm better friends with him kind of mm-hmm. thing. Like how would you, how would you mingle everyone together? So in that case, I literally will pull people apart. I'll be like, Joey, Joey. Oh, you have to meet my friend, Jessica. Yeah. She's my friend from high school. Joey's my friend from college. Right. And you guys will have so much in common because, and then you, what you want to do when you introduce two people is give them one or two points that are common, whether like, you know, you have, you both have kids or you both have a similar hobby um, or say something really interesting about Joey. Like, oh, Joey used to be a celebrity makeup artist. Yes. Oh. Right. And then, you know, Jessica will be like, oh my gosh, really? Like, how am I doing my blush? Right. Or just give them, you know, tell them the drugs are in the bathroom in the third drawer down yeah. <laughs> and have, have, have help yourselves, ladies. Go, they'll go along swimming. Make lane. sure you powder your nose. Uh, should we do a really intricate table arrangement setting, like seating chart for Atlanta? We do the whole thing. <laughs> Five for the guests? Yeah, all the people. You hear that? We don't know mafia? anything about them. You hear that, man, Mafia? We want you to be very ladylike when you're down. Da- do we want them to be ladylike? No, I think. Is they- that appropriate to even say ladylike? I don't think so anymore, right? Well, Who knows? Nothing is appropriate to say yeah. anymore. Woke, it's a travesty. woke culture. Um, that's very interesting. How did you deal with an overbearing? A lot of our Maya Mafia members are are newlyweds and getting married. Um, it's always, you know, it's it's been a silent thing. The mother in laws are always problematic, or they're always kind of like everyone has a fear of their mother in law and yep. has such an aura around it. How how do you manage that relationship for, for our young newlyweds getting married, dealing with the mother in law, having the and putting the, putting the husband in a rock and a hard place, like almost like you know, between choosing his mom or his, his wife or, or newlywed? How was that all broken apart? Yeah. So. Each person should take care of their own family. And the mother or the wife? Well, so, okay. So, for example, the wife takes care of her any issues between her family and the husband. And the husband takes care of issues between the mother-in-law and his wife. So, the wife should never directly conflict with the mother-in-law. If she has anything to disagree with, she should tell the husband and the husband should say it. The messenger. To the, ah. he, yes, he is the messenger. And people think that you should, you're supposed to be best friends with your mother-in-law. That's... It's false. Yeah. False. I mean, you should be, there's a great phrase in Chinese, you want to maintain a soup bowl distance between you and your mother-in-law, which is, let's say if you carry a bowl of soup from your house to hers, it stays hot, it doesn't go cold, right? So you don't, you don't wanna be too far away, but you don't wanna be too close. And it's about maintaining a friendly, a good relationship, but don't tell her everything. Right. You want to keep the relationship close to the vest. Yeah. What's the yeah. main difference? Guess you can't get it up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Your son Ethan. Okay. <laughs> What's the main difference between Chinese culture and American culture in terms of like, you know, etiquette and manners? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, so, so Chinese culture puts the group first and you put yourself as an individual last. And yeah. That's that's why like there's like family duties. You're always supposed to do what your parents say. You know, you check with everybody else before you make your own decision. Mm-hmm. In America, you put yourself first, and right, you live for yourself. You make your individual decisions. When you when when kids grow up and they graduate from college, they're on their own, right? Like they're they're on their own. But for mm-hmm. Chinese families, it's like when your kids grow up and go to college, when, after they get a job, they should still be close to you. They should still be helping out. All these things. So. The individual versus the group is well, one thing. You know, I want to. I want to find my dreams of being, you know, a poet, and I'm going to move to the six. Like they leave their family behind a lot of times because they're they they want to fo- focus on their career, not about how it means to the family or how their you know, parents are getting older. That's very yeah. interesting. Do you have a big family? I'm actually an only child, an only but child. I have a lot of cousins. And you grew up in Hong Kong. I grew up in Hong Kong, but I went. I came to the states when I was 14. So mm. I went to boarding school here. I'm very Americanized. Did your is your husband American? My husband is Chinese, and he doesn't speak a word of English. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, I went native. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Would your parents have been disappointed if you married an American? Um, not really. Actually, my 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 
family has never really minded who I married, which yeah. is very unusual for Chinese parents. Yeah, usually yeah. it's very sort of a cultural thing. You want to stick, stick, stick with your own. Yeah, stick with your own kind. But my dad has always said the world is your playground. Go explore, go play, and as long as you're with somebody who makes you happy, that's all you need. That was probably reverse psychology. He's because he's like, <laughs> yeah. go marry, go marry the the wild Frenchman or whatever. But like, you know, yeah. he's like, we got national so rebel against us. Yeah, exactly. Do exactly what she, what she can marry anyone she wants. She'll go yeah. back to the Chinese. It's true. I think my dad was very smart that way. Yeah, but I also married late. You know? Yeah, where, where do you guys live? In in uh, it, well, actually, we live in a tiny town, uh, called Li Shui. Oh, oh, you live yeah. in Hong Kong still. Oh no no that, sorry that that's in mainland China. So I grew up in Hong Kong, but I live I spent half my time in China, half my okay. time in the states, and in China I live between Shanghai, uh-huh. which you've heard of, yes. and Li Shui, which you definitely have not heard of, Ooh, which is a population two point five million. I'd say it's a three and a half tier city. What's that mean? Well, China ranks its cities. So okay. he's for example, got a two tier wig on. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is very similar. So, so for example, like I mean. Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen are first tier cities. Okay. There's a couple more. So it's, it'd be by saying like New York is a first tier city. By population or by wealth? Nah, I'm both. Yeah. I mean, you, for example, if if you applied that to America, you'd be like New York is a first tier city. Yeah. So it's basically LA is just a city. ranking the city based yeah, on yeah, yeah, totally. how nice it is. Just, just a straight Albuquerque, up rank. Albuquerque. Tier three. <laughs> Atlanta. That'd be a tier one city. Atlanta. Yeah, like, tier, Atlanta would be like, like a 1.5. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah, yeah. 1.5. 1. Atlanta would be 1.5. I think, I think New York, LA, and. Franklin, Mass. <laughs> no, I think in New York and LA. What are the other tier, one tier cities? Chicago would be tier one. Chicago's tier one? Yeah, yeah. Chicago, Miami would yeah. be Chica- Miami? I should think Chicago and Miami are the same tier, maybe 1.5. Well, Miami's like moving up. Okay. Yeah. And Chicago, I'm not very familiar with what Chicago. About Buffalo. Buffalo would be like maybe a 2.5. Five three two point five three. What about yeah. Boston? What about Boston, Boston would be like a one, one point five, one point five. Yeah, not yeah. not the reading you were expecting, my dear. <laughs> well, I, I, we didn't say Franklin Mass. We said <laughs> Frank said Boston. Where else are we going? What and, about and Nashville? The, so the total yeah. number of tiers you can have in China is four. Oh, so the okay. lowest tier is a fourth tier city. So you're small, a small, very small town. So my three. husband, he comes from a three and a half tier city. Which is oh, so that's where I spend half my time in China. Well, he was the only man there. That's why yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. small, there's no one else well, to pick from the town. This is like a 2.5 million population, <laughs> okay. but it, that's tiny in China yeah, yeah, standards. Yeah. Do you lo- do you like when you? How did you your husband meet? Um, so he met a wild me on- sex story. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> <laughs> she goes, "We met at NY Jacks on a Wednesday." <laughs> yeah. oh, I wish. No, um, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no version of that in China. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, he added me on WeChat. Oh. Yeah, which is kind of like. Don't you have to know the person? To... Yeah. Oh my God, how do you know? Because I've, I've, I travel, I work internationally, so I, I just have to have WeChat. Uh, I am so and impressed. My friend, my friend Jennifer Chen, she is, um, she lived in um, Hong Kong for a while and she's a, she's Chinese American, but yeah, she always uses it to, get, to be in touch with her friends from home. And what stuff. is it? It's like, it's like, uh, it's like WhatsApp, oh, but, it. but it's a super it's a Chinese app. It's like app. It has everything. WhatsApp, Facebook, Insta, like everything rolled into one. You can pay your rent on it. You pay your bills on it. You order cars on it. Oh yeah. shit. It's cool. It, you order food on it. That's what we have to, have to talk when she moved. You do to, meetings on it, what's like it video. Again? WeChat. 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 When she moved to Hong WeChat. Kong, I was, that's how we kept in touch because, you know, messaging, Phone messaging wasn't you know available then. Um, yeah, true. I mean, WeChat became famous in America when Trump tried to ban it. Yes, <laughs> true that. A couple of years ago. I remember. Crazy. Yeah. So, so my husband had my number because we'd met once, like five years prior, and oh. then one day he slid in the DM. He, it was three AM. <laughs> <laughs> he was and he had me on WeChat. <laughs> <laughs> and he had you on WeChat, and then he just slid in the DMs, and he was like, "Yeah, hey, he slid into my DMs." I mean, good? well, I rejected him because I don't. I mean, it's, she's proper as an etiquette teacher. You know, I don't. Um, except what is that's men. a great thing great question again our our, our my Malfoy fan base is the range between like 21 and like 45 um a lot of them are single and a lot of them are meeting things on apps what is like etiquette for um dating and and for a young girl dating I'm not young I mean you know a, yeah. a, a girl dating do, what is what do you think the rules are like you know after the first date do you sleep with each other on the first date do you call do you not be the first to text them back there's so many like mis- mysteries and rules about dating like what's the thing to remain a lady but still hold your ground how to deal with like men on in the new age when you're world. meeting a new guy online yeah, especially yeah, yeah. like you know do you send a, a dick pic i mean tip pic to them do you send <laughs> nudes on like before you meet like what is i mean i know that's regular proper right not to do that but is there like any tips for people dating on the in this cyber world 
Uh, to- <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of it. The cyber, cyber age. age. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like this what, is a cyber yeah. cafe, believe it or not. That's what I'm <laughs> well, this was a cat cafe. Yeah. But Nana started licking herself like a tabby. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, yes, Charlie there, said, what are the there rules? There are so many. Uh, I mean, you know, the the point with, I guess, cyber is do you want to stay in cyber or do you want to take it offline? No, they're going to take it offline. But do you know what I mean? Like, what is it? Are you supposed to call after the first date? Is a girl supposed to call the guy? There's so many, like, weird little rules. Can a lady reach out first? My thing always is, my thing is, like, girl, feel it out. Be right. Sometimes men need to be. uh, You know what? Yeah, sometimes men are insecure. Right. And I didn't, I didn't realize it actually uh, until like a lot of my guy friends would tell me they get nervous about asking a guy. They get nervous about rejection. Rejection, yeah. And so it's, I think it's tough for men, right? Like that they, they always had to be the first to initiate, blah blah blah. But in recent, I'd say in the last like ten years, you a lot of especially younger women in the next generation, Diego, they <laughs> are just so much more confident and they're not afraid to go get what they want. That's and, good. And I think it's great. So we encourage, it, so we're encouraging a lady. If you're interested in a guy, go after it. Go after it. And right. I think that as a, I think that as any, whether you're a girl or a boy, you should date as much or as possible. Somewhere <laughs> somewhere <laughs> somewhere <laughs> or somewhere in between. Or somewhere in between. You should date as much as possible. Yeah. Like the lo- the worst thing you can do is date your first boyfriend. I mean, marry your first boyfriend. Right. Right. I mean, then you have zero frame of reference. I'm my, boy, my, I'm my boyfriend's first boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I put this dress on. What do you think about dating um, eight large age gaps? What do you think about a, a twenty a twenty year age gap? Oh, I'm really into age gaps. I have a fourteen year age gap with my husband. Mine's twenty. I, wow. Well, you know what? High five. Get it, girl. And are you the younger? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm the daddy in the situation. Oh, that's gross. Don't cut no. that part. <laughs> I tried it. Tweet it out. out. <laughs> tweet it out. Um, no, and I for... tell all my girlfriends, go <laughs> for a much older guy I always loved who's guys. divorced. I always loved older guys. Uh, older guys who's divorced, right? So he's been through marriage. He knows what you it's all about. You want a divorce guy? Kind of. You got it, got it all out of the system. And he knows what went wrong. The other thing, learned from that. And now he, now he knows what to do in the, uh, his second marriage. And I think it's exactly. And I think especially like if you're a really hardworking sort of like go 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 get a girl, <laughs> yeah. then an older guy who's probably more successful in his career, yeah. he's not a, he's he's much more secure. He's confident. He's not intimidated. And they're t- they're tired out. They're not going to be going on hoeing around on you. They they lived all through their twenties. They're tired. They just want to lay on the couch. And watch exactly. Netflix. They've like <sighs> they've like hoed around all they wanted to. And yeah. Yeah. They're tired of it. I'm they afraid just... that would be like a habit though. It's like if a guy's like, oh, it's not that bad of getting married and divorced. Why not just get divorced if I got divorced before? I, I think because it, it, it it's it's it drains you not only mm-hmm. financially but like like meant yes. like a. Uh, a physical, uh, what's it called Physically. emotionally, and yeah. yeah, it's it's draining. I don't think anyone will want to go through that ever again. So I think I think yeah, I think it's like you let them run, let them get all of their system now, and then by the time they get to you, they're too tired to be doing anything. They're just like you know, that's a good like point. the worst thing you can do. I feel a man changes so much between <sighs> the ages of let's say thirty eight to forty five. But if they're on puberty blockers. <laughs> That'll then slow th- if they're on if, say they're on a tee shot every Tuesday. A tee shot Tuesday, okay. Go <laughs> that was rude. Now he's interrupted. We interrupted. That was rude. So we're learning. No, so right, a man goes through so much change during those years <laughs> that if you go in with, if you marry really young, let's say like especially under thirty or even early thirties, oh. and he goes through those like I mean it's a midlife crisis, right? He like either he does really well in his career and he wants something else or. I'd, I don't know what, but then by 40, 44, 45, he comes out the other end a different person and you're not sure if he still wants to be with you. Do you think that's universally that. true? No, most guys must... change. Most guys go through a midlife crisis. I think most people change. You're not getting yeah. back with him, Pat. That's what she's <laughs> <laughs> itching at. She's like, hey, you still... <laughs> what? Sorry. This is, this is probably rude. I, I had a dream about Goose the other night. Okay. His, moving his, on, his moving on. Dog. What you were, saying, you were saying? You were saying? Do you think that's universal? Do you think people do change universally? I think I think people change. I mean, and you want to you want to grow, right? You want to grow. You want to change. You don't yes. want to be the same person you were twenty years ago. Right. That's interesting. Um. So so, our, so when you marry an older guy, he's already been through all that. What's like? And he knows who oh, he yeah, is. Oh yeah, I'm older. I'm ready to like sell. Like I don't need anything. Like if I found someone that I'm like, oh, I did find someone that I I love. And it's perfect for me. Like I don't, you don't get choosy. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't pick your battles. Like when you when you're been, like when you're my age, it's just like I'm just happy. This sounds, this is perfect. This makes me happy. I don't need anything else. Like I, I'm done looking. I'm done. If this doesn't work out, I'm you know I'm just gonna not do anything. 
Glad okay. you got that off your chest. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially during social gatherings, picking up after the winter. What's the right amount of socializing for you? And how do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some time to yourself. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Guys, we use this. It's Joey and I swear by BetterHelp. We use BetterHelp. It's a great benefit that we have here at Barstool Sports. You've had the same lady for years. Yeah, for three years. I wouldn't be dressing in an unhinged Southern woman if I didn't have <laughs> BetterHelp. So, I would. I, I, I wore myself too thin, like this fabric. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Uh, like Joey has said in the past, and we all know here, it's entirely online, convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. It's not what you think of when you think of traditional therapy. They make it very easy to get hooked up with someone. If you don't like them, you just dump them. All they you never know. You don't have to never hear see them again. So it's, it's not the, like a and, I've, hair and I've done that before too. It's the best. So all you do is fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash out and about today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash out and about for 10% off your first month. Now say women are hoeing around. Yeah. Um, do you have anything that they can wipe their snurbs with? Here's <laughs> Yeah, I want to talk about, about your product. product. I love products, and I'm sitting here looking at this. This is, an, now how are we pronouncing this? Annette, um, Antivorta. Antivorta. Anti it means goddess of the future in Roman mythology. These, this is the intimate wipe. This is the most beautiful packaging. I love the colors. Ladies, so, I wish you can see, if you tune into Rumble or, 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 um, or YouTube right now and watch this. Now this is a lingette, that means wipe in French. Formulated with traditional Chinese medicine herbs, a blend of Japanese honeysuckle, dandelion extract, Chinese violet herb, also known as Zihu Dai Ding, D Ding, sorry, D Ding <laughs> extract. Now you've had D Ding extract before, correct? Or that was secretion. <laughs> no, 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 say it again. No, how, do you, how do you say it in your, in your native language? Zihua Di Ding. How do you say it? Zihua Di Ding. That's exactly what I said. I want to try it. Hold on, hold on. I want to. Zihua Di Ding. Here, let me open this for you. Zihua Di Ding, right? Yes. I got it. Look at this. Zihua Di Ding, Joey. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate it live right under my petticoat for you. This is now, beautiful. Yeah. Traditionally, okay, so traditionally, we can call this a horse bath where you, when you, <laughs> at the club, and you, the, man, the uh, man says he wants to go home with you. You can go into the ladies' room. You put them up with your antivora. And you wipe it down. Yeah. So it's and anti. Up. It's anti odor. So it fights odor. It fights irritation. It oh, helps it keep you delicious. moist. It, so this is a Chinese herbal formula. Oh it's my completely God. clean. It's vegan. It's it's actually our core formula is called. Um, Smell it. This actually smells phenomenal. Yeah, our, our core formula is called Wu Wei Xiao Du Ying, which is passed down from the Qing Dynasty. Oh. And oh. it's composed of five different herbs that are incredible. They have just such good benefits for this the skin. It smells. I'm very into fragrances. This is so fresh. So it's it, expensive. It smells expensive. It doesn't smell like you know a, a, a really perfumed because it's it's all natural herbs. It's all natural. Is this just for? This is just for your undercarriage. Well, yeah, and you, well, and it, actually, you can even use it for under armpits okay. if you, let's say, you're at the gym. Yep. But I like to, I like to travel with this. Yeah. So especially like on the train, on the plane, I keep some on my bedside table for before and after intimate moments. Yes. Okay. Now, Very good. I gotta be honest with you. If a vagina smelled like this, I go down there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been down. I've never, I've never, I've never been with a lady. But let me, try, let me freshen up myself. <laughs> go ahead, get in there now. You hold the hoop up, Diego. No. Yeah. <laughs> And, it's and where can you swallow, he swallowed it. He swallowed it whole. Now, and, traditionally, and um, where can people buy this? They can buy it on our website, okay. antivortalabs.com. We also have an Instagram account. And the great thing about like this is really soft. Just feel, just yeah, just wipe it against your hand. It's oh. because a lot of wipes are papery or scratchy, but this is just so soft and cloth like. And the best thing it's is, terrible. this is flushable. Mm. It's completely biodegradable. Oh, it is. It's made of plant fibers. Very nice. No plastic. It's safe for sewers. We well, you know what I like about this. Now I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I I know what the intentions are for these, but I'm going to be very uh, very very honest. What I'm going to be using these for. Now I'm a, when a when I go to the ladies' room and I have to I have to do my business. I need to have a wipe. When Joey goes, when Joey mean, when make, you do number two, number two, I it, need to have wipes. This is a perfect size that a man a man or a woman could put in their jeans pocket. Yep. If you're going out and you know like you know God forbid you have to go to the bathroom. Like I, first of all, going to the bathroom in public is never a pleasant yeah. experience. With this, I can be I can be in a prison bathroom well, in front of people and smell this, and I feel like I'm I'm taking right back to my. You could go to the local dog park even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and this is making me feel luxurious. Um, 
And the packaging's perfect. It's a, it's a long package. You can put it right in your pocket. Well, it's discreet, which is nice. Can I have nice. your box? Are you going to use these? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course I'm going to use them. <laughs> well, this is nice. It's very discreet packaging. So, ladies, if you need a present uh, for yourself, if you want to treat yourself or if you want to treat a friend. The callers are trying to order right now, live. They're trying to Amazing. <laughs> we, got, we got callers right now. Oh, we've been live. I'm sorry. You didn't, you didn't know that? Um, make sure you check this out, antivorta.com. Antivortalabs.com. Labs.com. This is fantastic. How's the uh, book sales going? So we publication date is April 9th. Okay. <gasps> and you know, right now we're stacking up on pre orders. You are it's so, so pretty. far so good. Thank you. Oh, and oh look at God. this. You have Drew Barrymore. You've been on the Drew Barrymore show. Yep, she You've wrote a blog for my book. Jean Georges is hosting the you book launch. I saw Vivian Tam. I used to wear Vivian Tam when I had to drag back in the nineties. Oh my gosh, she's like my time. Hong Kong auntie. I know I love really? Vivian. I'll have to tell her that. I was I'm We're gonna have to show her this episode. Yes. Yeah. I, Vivian, of course. let me tell you, I when, as a young drag queen. Everyone else would be wearing like costumes they'd make and they're there. And I worked I worked in a very affluent mall, um, shopping center and they sold Vivian Tam at I believe Nima Marcus and they had it and but I would you know why I loved your designs? Because they were um they were they were risque enough. Um, because there was a lot of sheer, a lot of sheer yeah, stretch. Well, it, was it was the nineties. You had to show. Yeah, it was net. So I had my favorite blouse. Was it was this red, bright red blouse, and it had a crisscross design, and it just made me feel so pretty and like so like put together. But the dresses, I loved all the dresses because they all had that stretch kind of thing to, and I can like you know. I, you know, Squeeze I have a different body, it. so I was, I was able to fit into it being a broader woman. Um, but I, and I always felt so so expensive. I was like, oh, where's that dress from? I was like, it's, it's Vivian Tam. I, I, I saw the name on there. That takes me back because well, I, I felt so regal wearing Vivian Tam. She wrote a drag queen. glowing that. endorsement of your book. I, she says, I, it's, listen, it's all about like, finding yourself and developing yourself. Yeah. This is oh my God. Yeah. Jean George. He, yeah. Jean the George. chef. The chef. Yes. The chef. He's hosting my book launch party. Oh, Where well, we're it? actually, please we're come. actually going. No, can we really come? Yes, Where is it? It's Tin, Tin Building. You know, he in South Street, C4. Yes, I know exactly yeah. it. I would love That's to what, go. Please uh, come. On the water. I was just there. Make sure and we'll we dress send like you normal I was, humans. It's so pretty there. It's was right on the water. Have you been there so at night? So beautiful. I, said, I yes. had lunch there not too long ago. It's beautiful there. Let's so it. so it's on the second floor. Yes. And I'll make sure I get both of your numbers yes. after this. And he, he would love to see you. Oh, how fun. I'm so glad I had this book. I'm going to I'm gonna actually read this book. Not that I would not, would not read the guest book, but I. This Listen, is we've had we've had some, some people in here yeah, before. This is something I'm so interested in, and yes. so and this is my this is my whole vibe. You know, I'm an. I'm host. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's useful. It's like it breaks everything down for any situation you want to get into, any question you have, everything from how to dine, how to eat, how to introduce people, to how to dress, how to act in certain situations. Sarah Jane Ho has got you covered. Mind your manners. Out on April 9th. Um, any parting advice for us before we go to the south and and take on our live shows? Wipe your pussies with these wipes. Put it, steam your damn dress yep. and keep your legs closed to marry men. <laughs> Anything to add, dude? I love it. I know you got it. All you right. got it. Close your legs to married men. That's that's, <laughs> that's an Atlanta reference from the housewives. Oh, is it? I love that. Yes. Uh, Sarah Jane Ho, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thank you, boys. Thank you.